Westerham Spirit of Kent. too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I am really excited about this beer. This is one from the Westerham Brewery and it's called Spirit of Kent. And the reason I'm so excited is because this has got so much to talk about that this, I think this is gonna be a long review, all right? So make yourself comfortable. I'm gonna bore the shit out of you. Where do I start? Well, first of all, if you don't know, Westerham is in Kent. It is on the borders between Surrey and Kent, and it is quite well known for Winston Churchill's place being based here. It's, it's on the A25 as you go towards Surrey. I've been there a few times. Very nice part of the world it is. But, and I'm, I'm really getting excited about this beer, and the reason is because a, it's reasonably local to me. It uses nine hops, yeah? It's called Nine Hop Triple X Pale Ale, right? Now, you'd think that this is gonna be some sort of American abomination with nine hops in it. It's not. All these hops are British hops. All these hops are grown in Kent, right? Now, I'll get onto the hops when I talk about the beer stats, all right? Um, it's quick, I'll give you a quick history of Westerham Brewery, okay? Now they're relatively new, okay? They started in 2004, but they started up and they based their, their ethics and you know what they were gonna brew and the brewing tradition on the Black Eagle Brewery, which was based in Westerham. And that was, by, that, that was started in 1862 right and it was brewing beers locally using local malts local hops and you know it was brewing up until i think it was the 1950s what they are most famous for is brewing the beer that was dropped over normandy when the british forces landed there in 1944. now i don't know if you know but i love my world war ii history it's one of my passions and well, history in general, but especially World War II. And the name of this beer, Spirit of Kent, is named after a Mark IX Spitfire that's based in Biggin Hill, which is in Kent. Now, Biggin Hill was a huge airfield in the Battle of Britain, but that Mark IX Spitfire is based in Biggin Hill. I've been there and I've sat in it. I haven't flown in it, unfortunately, it's a single seater, but I've sat in it and it is an amazing experience it really is just to sit in it and you know i know the, i know the mark nines weren't used much in like the battle of britain but just to you know get a feeling of what it was like to sit in a spitfire is you know i can only imagine what it's like flying one it must be absolutely amazing with you know that v12 merlin engine roaring away in the front but that's what that is, and it's got the uh, you know it's got the invasion stripes on there. You know the black and white stripes, which were for um, recognition for Allied forces. But the, the the dropping of the beer, they they quickly realised that you know once they've in, invaded France, you know the frogs weren't going to make any decent beer, and they thought right, well how are we going to get any beer over there? And they tried a few things. They came up with a you know British ingenuity. And when it comes to beer, they filled beer, Wester and Bitter. I'm a, I'm a bit disappointed this isn't a bitter, but no worries. But they filled it with Wester and Bitter into the drop tanks and they codenamed them Triple X, and that's where it's getting this name from. They called it a Triple X depth charge. And they brought these over. And of course, coming over, they were nicely chilled when they got there. And, you know, the, the British forces had bitter. And it was a great idea 
and the that tradition has sort of been upheld in this beer and they've called it nine hop triple x pale ale and as i say i preferred it to have been a bitter but you know <laughs> it's got everything else about it so i can't really complain and it's got a nice cover on there let me show you the label all right so what you got you got these host houses in the back on there and there now if you've never been to kent the first thing you'll notice when you do go to kent there is still a lot of these host houses available and they were used for drying the hops and i remember when i first came to kent years ago i noticed these and i couldn't work out what they were but they are host houses you don't see them in many parts of the country apart from kent okay so that's what you've got in the background and then you of course you've got the the mark 9 spitfire there and it was the label that done it for me but what makes it even better is the ingredients which i'm going to get onto now right this is 500 ml bowl this is four percent so it's perfectly sessionable all right are you ready for the ingredients okay you have got in the malt steaks steaks you've got pale malt which is going to be your base malt you've got caramel caramel is very nice it's quite sweet tastes absolutely gorgeous in beers if it's done right especially british ales it really does go down a treat the hops right make yourself comfortable i'm not going to go through all the individual tasting notes of the hops but what i will say these are all grown in kent all right so the hops are target you've got goldings you've got pilgrim you've got sovereign you've got progress you've got first gold you've got um whitbread gold uh, variety uh, Bramling Cross, and you've got Finch Cook's Hop X, which is a, a a very rare specific hop to Kent, and that's the nine hops. And that is, you know, if ever there was a beer that just screamed England, this is it because it is. I think it must have. I'm probably I'm speaking off the top of my head here, but I think it's got every single. Oh no, it hasn't got Challenger. No, it hasn't got Challenger hops. No, I was just about to say that it's got every single British variety of hops. It hasn't, but it's got quite a few. Nine, to be precise. And it is reasonably bitter. It's uh, got the, an IBU of 43, which is middling, I would say. It's strong, it's... it's bit more bitter than a lager but it's not it's nowhere near the sort of west coast type bitterness but i can imagine i'm just trying to imagine that the great british flavors that are going to come out of this beer and it's a pale ale it's a nine hop pale ale and i know this is going to be a british style pale ale because it, there's nothing american about it which i love and it's a shame that this is not going to get as popular as some of the american style pale ales which is a shame because you know this this style of beer isn't in fashion at the moment but it will be you mark my words people are going to get fed up with these over hops american well, i'm talking about over hops there's fucking nine different hops in here but i think they're going to get fed up with that over the top citrus flavor but that's just me that's just me wishing and hoping, as they say. Anyway, I'm not going to talk anymore. Well, I am. I just want to say one quick more thing about the ingredients. The yeast strain in this goes back to the Eagle Brewery, which was, I think it was disbanded in the late 40s or early 50s. Taylor Walker, do you remember them? They took them over and they in turn were taken over by Iron Coop. But what they did before they were taken over, they freeze dried some of their yeast. They, Westerham, have got hold of some of their freeze-dried yeast, or the culture, the frozen culture, and they've redone it, and they put it in this beer. Right, let's get this fucker open. Don't let me down, Westerham. I have... Oh, here we go. Here we fucking go. 
You know, I was talking about that yeast. I think there might have been a little bit too much of it in here. It's gone everywhere. There's the cap. Fuck, I wish that hadn't have happened. Right, let me get it in the glass. I'm not gonna do Northerner, Southerner, beer reviews, beer hoover. Ah, oh, that's a f luckily I've got my motorhead slip mat. This is gonna get absolutely soaked. Fucking hell. Why did that happen? I, I think I know why it happened. I'm, I'm blaming it on the yeast, but I don't think it was. I had this lying down in, in the fridge and I propped it upright. Sometimes when you do that, it does go a bit pear-shaped. Ah, that's a real fucking shame, that, because I've wasted a load there. Booger. Oh, no, it's all gone over me work laptop. Brilliant. Birds love it. Right. I'll have to give that. Fucking hell, it's going to smell like a brewery in here. Great. Wow, look at that. Very hazy. Indeed. Wow. On the nose. Hmm. Not really getting anything. Oh, there's a very slight vinegar smell. Oh no, please. After all that fucking hype. Are you really going to do this to me? There it is. can't really get any aroma out of that at all. There it is, there's the, the colour, it's like a dark orange, it looks almost like a wheat beer. If the head was bigger, I would say that that is a wheat beer. Anyway, let's get it down the hatch. Wish me luck, this could be really good or really shite. Bottoms up. And it's not bad. It is not bad at all. Wow, what bit of finish on that. Now, <clears throat> this I can imagine would taste really good out of a cask. And the reason is, it tastes good out of the bottle, but it reminds me of a cask beer. Now, I think the Coniston Brewery, Bluebird, did that as well, and they've done it here. Burton Bridge tried to do it and fucked it up massively. This is really nice. Oh, super easy drinking, that is. A little touch of citrus, like orange. But the earthiness on this, and the bitterness on the finish, is just typically British. I really had my reservations about this when it all fizzed up. I thought, oh Christ, this is going to be, this is going to be another Burton Bridge abomination. But it's not. That was probably where I just had it lying down on the on the shelf in the fridge. This tastes absolutely gorgeous. Hasn't been, obviously hasn't been filtered. Oh, it's so easy drinking. And the flavors are quite subdued. There's a little touch of caramel malt on there. But for all them hops, all I'm getting is a little touch of orange, some earth, well, quite a bit of earth actually, a little touch of spice, and quite a fair bit of earthy, spicy bitterness. You know that typically British 
earthy, spicy bitterness that you get in a best bitter. I'm getting it in this as well. And I have to say, it is super drinkable. Now this is my kind of pale ale. Really good. That is fantastic. A lot of your American beer fans, they wouldn't give this the time of day. It, it's completely against what they think makes a good pale ale. This to me is what a pale ale, or certainly a British pale ale, should taste like. But as I say, you know, it, it probably won't appeal to your craft beer fans. It's it's not got any of the any of the big grapefruit, the pineapple, the mango, none of that in there at all. You've got a touch of orange, big earth, big spice, touch of caramel malt, super drinkability, quite a nice body on it as well. And I'm imagining that's coming from the caramel, because caramel does give it a bit of a body on it. But it is super sessionable. I could neck quite a few of these. I could see myself down a pub and having sort of six or seven of these and loving it. And it would probably get nicer as it went down. Mm. It's just a good, easy drinking British pale ale. <laughs> I know a little bit spilt out, it wasn't that much. I'm down to that already. That's how drinkable it is. It really is good. Um, I'm going to put it down there because I'm going to fucking kill it. That's how, that's how drinkable that is. And I'm really pleased because I had my reservations when it fizzed up. And I thought this is going to be absolutely disastrous. But it wasn't. It's really good. So what's the verdict? Yeah. I really like it. Now, I've got another one in the fridge from Westerham. It's there, they call it a Viceroy, and it's an IPA. And if it's anything like this, this is, I have to say, I haven't tasted a British, or I haven't reviewed a British pale ale as good as this in a long, long time. In fact, I'm struggling to think of a pale ale that is as good a British pale ale that is as good and traditional as this. I mean, that hop, that brew sheet is just, I mean, the, you look at the hops on there, that is just, uh, you know, apart from the Challenger hops, you know, I think that's every British hop. And I love it. I love everything about it. I love the history behind it, why they've called it. I know they've only been going since 2004 and they may be jumping on the back of the, the Black Eagle Brewery that was based in Westerham, but why not? Why not? You know, the, the Black Eagle Brewery is gonna, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna die out. You know, nobody's gonna know about it, but they're keeping that tradition in life. You know, and in an, in an age of, you know, when everybody's doing craft beer, and they're just pumping out IPAs and you know American style beers, over hopped, super citrusy. This stuff, you know, it just carries on doing what it's doing, and no, no mess, no fuss, just pure impact. I nick that off a record. I'll let you work out which one, but yeah, brilliant. I love it. This for me is getting a ten out of ten, and the reason it's getting a ten out of ten is because. I love everything about it. I love the label. I love the fact they've put all the British hops in it. And it tastes so fucking good. Well, oh, it's lovely. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna get some more of this. I absolutely love that. That for me is a 10 out of 10. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>